What are some of the common pitfalls that in, can impact approval of applications due to inadequate extractable leachable information? Extractable and leachable safety assessments can be some of the most challenging review issues in an application, requiring a coordinated effort between the CMC and toxicology review staffs. From a toxicology perspective, based on our experiences reviewing these studies and working with our CMC colleagues, we've identified seven common pitfalls that can negatively impact our ability to recommend approval of an application. These are, number one, presence of compounds above the qualification threshold that have not been identified. Number two, inadequate sensitivity of the detection methods. Number three, use of an inappropriate qualification threshold. Number four, inadequate stability data to examine trends in leachables over time. Number five, inadequate toxicology justification to support a permissible daily exposure, or PDE, as described in the ICH guidances, or referred to as an acceptable daily intake in the PQRI documents. Number six, inadequate descriptions of how extractable data were used to design the leachable assessments. And number seven, inadequate extractable leachable correlations. What advice do you have regarding safety assessments for extractables leachables? My advice to organizations preparing submissions to regulatory authorities, such as the FDA, is to be extremely clear in how your assessments were designed. Explain in detail how you designed the qualification program and how you leverage the extraction study results to inform the design of your leachable study. Make sure your analytical evaluation threshold is consistent with the review division's safety concern threshold expectations. Provide a summary table of the compounds detected, their concentrations, the maximum daily dose that would result from use of the product, and the confidence in the identification of the compound. Evaluate at least three batches of the final to-be-marketed drug product over the course of stability and include multiple time points to identify trends over time. Submit study reports with an integrated discussion including hyperlinks to the individual study reports which should clearly show how these data were generated and integrated to justify your approach. Refer to USP chapters 1663 on extraction studies and 1664 on leachable studies which provide excellent discussions of best practices for extractable and leachable studies consistent with the PQRI recommendations. From a toxicology perspective, if you are relying upon a PDE ADI assessment, explain why you chose the pivotal tox studies you did, including safety factors and copies of all references cited. Finally, don't wait until late in development to begin planning these studies. The extractable leachable assessment should be built into the long-term stability studies just like drug product degradants. Adequate planning and discussion with the agency ahead of time is crucial to success. When would a post-marketing leachable assessment be needed? Even after approval of a product, it's not unusual for changes in the manufacturing process to trigger the need for new leachable studies. These data are almost always necessary prior to approval of a new chemistry supplement. A change in the components of the container closure system certainly require reassessment of the original extractable leachable conclusions and likely require new data. But other smaller changes in the manufacturing process may also require reassessment of the existing extractable leachable data and may well require new studies. Examples include changes in excipients in the drug product formulation, changes in raw material suppliers, changes in sterilization methods, storage conditions or shelf life, and even changes to the upstream manufacturing process. Each of these can result in changes in the extractable leachable profile, potentially even introducing new chemicals and require reassessment of the existing toxicology risk assessments. It may be possible, depending on the nature of the change, to design a bridging study or use a simulation study to address minor changes, if there are adequate data to create a bridge. Planning ahead and obtaining agency feedback on your plan will hopefully prevent unnecessary delays in implementation of manufacturing changes.